Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at the new GarageBand for iPad. So GarageBand for iPad may be one of the most complex apps I've ever seen on the iPad. Now, it's not as comprehensive as GarageBand for Mac, but it does have all of these cool instruments that make it easy to compose your own music. Let's take a look. So when you first run GarageBand, you get something kind of like the iWork apps where you can flip through the different documents that you have. To create a new one, press the plus button at the bottom, create new song. And it's going to take you right to the instruments. So you have to start a new song by selecting an instrument. So let's just start with the simplest thing, the keyboard here. So I'm just going to tap off a little bit here on the keyboard. You can hear I'm going to record by pressing the red button at the top. It'll do the metronome count in. And then I'll hit stop. And you can see I've got something recorded there at the top in the timeline. It's green there. I'm going to now click at the top. There's a little switch there uh, right above the number three. You could see it where I click and it will take me to what looks like a familiar GarageBand interface there. So now here we could add more loops just like you would in GarageBand on the Mac. You click on the loops up there and you can select an instrument like drums and select something here and drag it in and it will create a new track. In addition I can tap that track there and if I double tap it will allow me to loop it. Now one of the ways GarageBand is different here is if you click on the little puzzle piece in the upper left you can see their song sections. This is section A and it's eight bars and I can add more song sections so and have them loop and do different things. So kind of interesting. I'm sure that's something we'll see go back to regular GarageBand. Uh, now I can play this. And I can add more loops to it. I can also select something and uh, modify the track. One of the things I can do here of course is set it so that it the notes kind of match a little bit better to the beat. And then I can return to instruments to add another instrument. So let's take a look here at Smart Guitar for instance. It's one of the cool things here is you've got these bars and you can just play an entire chord just at one tap. And you can turn autoplay on and switch it off to say here autoplay number three. And now I press one of the bars and it just continues to play, strum a little rhythm there and I can switch at any time to another chord. I could also play the guitar in a regular way. So if I go here into Smart Guitar I can play the chords. I can strum down the strings, play individual strings in here or switch to simply notes and play individual notes for doing like solos. I can even bend the strings. Now you have some other smart instruments as well. Smart keyboard, smart bass have similar things where you can set them up to just go on their own and just change the chords. There's also smart drums. Let me show you the regular drums first. The regular drums work like this. You have a drum kit. You can click here to choose the drum kit and then you get to tap the drums. And it does matter where you tap the drum, like for instance in the center here. I'm going to tap on the edge of the drum there and it makes a different sound. So Smart Drums is something completely different altogether. Tap on that and you're going to get this grid here. And in this grid you can add an instrument. So let's add the kick here. And I can put it on this chart. High is loud, low is quiet, left is simple, complex is right. I'm going to put it right here and it will just continue to go. Then I can add something else, like a hi-hat. I'll put that in louder, more complex. And then I'll add some claps down here. And a snare. And you can actually just roll the dice here with that button on the left and create something new. Choose a different drum kit as well and you have different instruments, different parts of the drum kit on the right. 
There are a bunch of other instruments as well. This one here is where you can plug in your guitar using one of the uh, connectors that allows you to do that. It's also the audio recorder records from the mic. And there's this sampler instrument that basically allows you to record off the mic and then play that recording on a keyboard. So let's try this. Mac most. Mac most. Mac most. Mac most. Mac most. So GarageBand works on both the iPad 1 and the iPad 2. So you may want to give it a look. It's certainly a lot of fun to play with. Till next time, this is Gary with Mac Most Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.